Thank you for choosing Doylestown Hospital's Orthopedic Institute for your upcoming surgery. This educational video is for patients receiving total knee replacement surgery. Some of you will be going home the same day, and some of you will be staying the night. There are many things that are similar in the process, and we will discuss the differences when they occur. We are extremely appreciative of the fact that you have elected to have your joint replaced here at Doylestown Hospital. Please refer to your teaching packet throughout this presentation. We are committed to helping you through this journey. No question is too small, and although we have tried to capture the most common questions, we know you still have some. If you have questions after this presentation, please call the Orthopedic Navigator at 267-893-9300. If you have not read the Total Joint Surgery Program booklet, please stop the video and review the booklet before you start this presentation. The orthopedic program at Doylestown Hospital has been recognized for outstanding excellence in patient care. The program is Joint Commission Specialty Certified since November 2010 in Total Hip and Total Knee Replacement. It is also a member of the AJRR which is the American Joint Replacement Registry. The goals of this presentation are to alleviate your anxiety, to understand the preoperative, surgical, and postoperative process, and for you to prepare for your surgery. We want to identify and clarify the steps that are needed and also identify any equipment you might need prior to the surgery. You should have received a pre-admission folder from your surgeon's office. Please bring this folder to all your appointments. It includes important information regarding your surgery, including pre-surgical instructions, pre-surgical education, and information on pain control. The pre-operative process can be overwhelming. We are here to help you. At least four weeks prior to your surgery, the orthopedic navigator will call to schedule your pre-admission testing appointment, an orthopedic physician assistant appointment, and an education class, if indicated. The pre-admission testing and ortho PA appointment will be scheduled on the same day, whenever possible, and will occur as close to 30 days before surgery as possible. The appointment will last about an hour and a half to two hours. During this appointment, you will have blood work performed. If you are not going to a cardiologist, you will need to get an EKG at this time. If there are any issues with your testing, the orthopedic PA will contact you directly. We have an orthopedic PA who follows your medical condition from the time of pre-admission testing to the time you are discharged. About one week prior to your pre-admission testing, you will speak with a pre-admission nurse over the phone. She will review your medical and surgical history, as well as your current medications, including over-the-counter vitamins and supplements. She will also review any pre-op instructions that you will need to follow prior to your surgery, as well as obtain contact information of your primary care physician, specialist, and pharmacy. Once your pre-admission testing appointment is scheduled, you can schedule your primary care physician, cardiology, and dental clearances. These clearances need to be completed after you have your blood work done at your pre-admission testing. Not everyone needs to receive these clearances. Your surgeon will tell you if you need to see one. We know that this is a tight time frame, but it is important to have blood work done and your clearances close to your surgery. Your surgeon may order physical therapy prior to your surgery. The navigator will help you coordinate the appointment if you are having your therapy at Doylestown. As stated previously, you will be meeting with a PA prior to your surgery. The PA follows your medical care from the time of pre-admission testing until after your surgery. She will review all pre-admission testing information clearances as they become available. She will call you if there are any issues. During your visit, she will review your medical history and perform a physical. She will review your medication list and your post-operative plan of care. She will provide you with a prescription for mupirocin, the medic medicine you will use prior to your surgery. After your surgery, when you go to the orthopedic floor, she will be there to assist you with your post-operative medical management. 
Based on your past medical history, you may be instructed to speak with anesthesiology prior to the day of your surgery. This option is available to any patient upon request. If you have specific questions, let the orthopedic navigator know and she will assist you with arranging for anesthesiology to contact you. The following slides will talk about what you need to do to prepare for surgery. If you will be going home the same day of surgery, you will need to identify a coach. This is someone who will be with you at the time of your surgery and stay with you for several days. If you're staying overnight, we request that you make arrangements for someone to be with you for a few days after you go home. If you have no one to go home to or no one to stay with you, please let the orthopedic navigator know. She will discuss your options. If the plan is for you to get outpatient physical therapy, we ask that you make arrangements for someone to drive you to outpatient physical therapy for several weeks. The navigator will discuss dates with you based on when your surgery is. If you need a referral for outpatient therapy, you will need to call your primary care physician to have it set up prior to your surgery. You will need to purchase the necessary equipment and supplies prior to your surgery. You should pick up all throw rugs and make sure your house is free of tripping hazards. If you are told to stop certain medications prior to your surgery, please follow the instructions that were provided. All the equipment on the following slides are outlined on the medical equipment form in your packet. On the back side of the form, there are local equipment companies where you can purchase any needed items. You may also purchase these items at most chain drug stores or online. You should buy these items or obtain them if borrowing them prior to your surgery date. You will need a wheeled walker after your surgery, two wheels, not four. You can purchase or borrow a wheeled walker prior to surgery. If you obtain a walker prior to surgery, please bring it with you on the day of surgery so a therapist can properly adjust the height. In order for a walker to be covered by insurance, you must have a doctor's prescription. All insurances are different and cover different amounts. If you have not purchased or borrowed a wheeled walker prior to surgery, let us know during your hospital stay. The physical therapist at the hospital will issue you a walker from an outside vendor. The outside vendor will bill you for anything your insurance does not cover. Paperwork will be given at the time of issuing a walker for your records. If there are any issues with the walker, you will need to contact the vendor. You will also need to purchase a single point cane. It will be used on the steps and when you progress from the wheeled walker to a cane. The best type is an adjustable cane. Most insurances will only pay for one assistive device, so it is best to have your insurance company pay for the walker rather than the cane. Depending on the height of your toilet, you may need to purchase toilet equipment before surgery. If you are struggling or unable to stand, we recommend either a 3-in-1 commode, which is pictured on the left, or a raised toilet seat with rails, which is pictured on the right. Either of these pieces of equipment will raise your toilet height, allowing you to stand more easily. Insurance usually does not cover these items. If you are concerned about installing grab bars, there are temporary suction cup grab bars that you can purchase online or in a store. You should make sure that they work prior to your surgery because they do not always stick on all surfaces. There are a few things you will need to do prior to your surgery. Three days prior to your surgery, including the morning of your surgery, you will be instructed to shower using your special soap HIPAA cleanse. There is a handout in your folder to describe this process. The first night after using HIPAA cleanse, use clean sheets and wear clean clothes to bed. We also ask that you have no pets in bed for three days prior to your surgery. You will be given a prescription for mupirocin ointment when you see the ortho PA. This is to be placed in your nose in the morning and evening for three days prior to the surgery and in the morning before you come to the hospital. 
You will also receive this bupirocin ointment the evening of your surgery, as well as the morning and evening of the day after your surgery. This is to help prevent infections. Please see the handout for this process. You do not need to bring the mupiracin ointment to the hospital. Just a review, mupiracin is used for a total of five days, three days before, day of surgery, and day after. On the day before surgery, the hospital will contact you and tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. If your surgery is on a Monday, you will receive a call on Friday. You are not to eat anything eight hours prior to your arrival time. You are able to drink eight ounces of clear liquids up to two hours prior to your arrival time. You may be thinking, what is clear liquid? A clear liquid is anything that you can see through. Examples are water, apple juice, and light colored sports drinks. Black coffee and tea are also acceptable, but you cannot add cream. By not adhering to these guidelines, we may have to cancel your surgery. So please remember, clear liquids up to two hours prior to your scheduled arrival time at the hospital. A few reminders for the day of surgery. Do not eat anything eight hours prior to your arrival time. Again, only eight ounces of clear liquids up to two hours prior to your arrival. You should shower in the morning using special soap, Hippoclans. You should use your nose medicine, mupirocin, prior to coming to the hospital. You will report to the same day surgery area on the second floor of the main building of the hospital. Please check in at the volunteer desk. Only one person is permitted in the prep area with you. Additional guests may remain in the atrium waiting area. A volunteer will escort you to the same day surgery area. Once you are escorted back, the nursing staff will begin to prep you for your surgery. You will receive an IV through which you will receive fluids, pain medications, and antibiotics. You will have the IV site in during your whole hospital stay. If there is no IV running, the IV access will still be in your arm. The nursing staff will begin to cleanse your leg with wipes that are specially treated to help prevent infection. If you have hair in the area, they will clip it if necessary. You may be fitted for TED hose, which are compression stockings. Your leg will be initialed to ensure surgery is performed on the correct knee. You will use the restroom prior to going to surgery. You will meet with the anesthesiologist prior to your surgery. Also, please bring a list of any medications that you are currently taking. We realize that you gave the nurse this information previously. However, at times, medications do change. Also, if you are instructed to bring any medications with you, please do so. When it is time for your surgery, you will need to say goodbye to your family members. You will leave the same day surgery area and go to the operating room. You may go to the holding area first. Prior to your surgery, you will be given antibiotics and two additional doses following your surgery. Your vital signs will be monitored, including blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen levels. Your surgery will take approximately one hour. Your physician works with the vendor prior to your scheduled surgery to ensure that your new knee will be the correct fit. The hospital team prepares the new joint prior to surgery so that it is ready for you. An incision is made on the front of the knee. The length will vary based on your body type. The length will be as long as needed to access the joint. I know that your surgeon has already reviewed what happens during surgery, but I would like to review it here again. The damaged or degenerative parts are removed and replaced with new artificial parts. In order to understand what is replaced, we are going to now look at what a normal knee looks like. As you can see from the picture on the left, this is what a normal knee looks like. The picture on the right shows what we are replacing. There is a femoral component, a tibial component, 
and there is also the back of the patella that is replaced. Your new knee will have a cobalt chrome cap on the end of your femur or thigh bone, a titanium plate on the tibia or shin bone, a polythylene spacer in between the tibia and the femur, and a button will be placed on the inner surface of the patella or kneecap. Bone cement will be used to keep the artificial parts in place. Once the knee is replaced, it is tested by moving the joint in multiple directions to ensure a proper fit. X-rays are taken to ensure that it is in the proper position and in alignment with your other leg. Your incision is stitched with dissolvable stitches on the inside. Depending on the surgeon, your incision will be closed with either staples or glue. If staples are present, you'll be given instructions for when to have your staples removed. Once your surgery is completed, you will have a covering placed on your incision called an aquacell dressing. You will be transferred from the OR table to your hospital bed and have foot pumps placed on your feet and ice will be placed on your surgical knee. You will then be taken to the post anesthesia care unit or PACU. Your pain will be assessed and your medications provided through your IV. The nurses there will make sure that you are comfortable and safely come out of anesthesia. You will continue to be on monitors. Your time in the PACU will depend on how you are recovering. Family members are not permitted in this area. Once you are ready to leave the PACU, if you are a same-day surgery patient, you will return to the same-day surgery area until it is time for you to go home. Physical therapy will ensure that you are able to ambulate and safely return home. If you are staying overnight, you will be transported to the orthopedic unit in your hospital bed. You will be greeted on the floor by a nurse who will do an assessment. The nursing staff will take your vitals frequently and monitor your pain levels. They will give you your medications as well as two doses of IV antibiotics during your stay. Once you are admitted, you will begin to take pain medications by mouth once you begin to eat. Staff will assist you with ordering your meals. All meals are ordered through our At Your Request program. The meals are made to order and delivered within an hour of ordering. Because you just had surgery, you will not be permitted to get up by yourself. You must ring your call bell for help. This is for your safety. Physical therapy will begin the day of surgery and continue throughout your hospital stay. Occupational therapy will begin the day after surgery. As stated previously, if you are going home the same day, physical therapy will see you prior to going home. Your surgeon may order a therapist to meet you at home. If you do stay overnight, you will have foot pumps on your feet while in bed in order to prevent blood clots. Please make sure that you do not get out of bed by yourself as these foot pumps are attached to the bed and will cause you to fall. Ice packs are available to help you with your knee pain and can be changed multiple times throughout the day. Depending on your past medical history, you may have other physicians come and see you while you are in the hospital. The most common specialists are a hospitalist or a cardiologist. The orthopedic PA will see you after surgery. Here at Dolestown Hospital, we use a multimodal pain management approach. The plan starts prior to the surgery, continues during your stay, and upon discharge. This includes the use of narcotic and non-narcotic pain medication, ice, and elevation to reduce swelling. You will be given medications based on your level of pain, which will be explained to you by the nursing staff. You will need to ask for your pain medications. You are having an orthopedic surgical procedure and you will experience pain postoperatively. Our goal is for your pain to be managed appropriately to allow you to be as comfortable as possible and able to participate in therapy. We use a pain scale of 0 to 10 to rate your pain. See the sheet in your folder which explains the pain scale. You will be asked your pain level several times during the day. 
Pain medications work in different ways, and people respond differently to medications. If your pain is not tolerable, you will need to let your nurse know. This form reviews the common medications that are given on the orthopedic unit and lists several side effects for pain medications. Pain medications can cause constipation. You will be prescribed a stool softener while in the hospital, and you should continue with this medication at home. If you go longer than three days without having a bowel movement, you need to let your surgeon know immediately. If you are experiencing any other side effects, you should let the surgeon know. In order to prevent blood clots following your surgery, most patients will be instructed to take aspirin for four weeks. If you are already on Coumadin, your blood work will be monitored postoperatively. Unless otherwise notified, your surgeon will be responsible for monitoring your Coumadin levels when you go home. If you are on a special medication, such as Pradaxa or Eliquis, you will be placed on Coumadin postoperatively and then will be transitioned to your preoperative medicine when it is safe to do so. You will be given special instructions upon discharge. Upon discharge, your prescriptions will be sent electronically to your pharmacy of choice. For your convenience, ShopRite Pharmacy is located on the first floor of the hospital, making it easy for a family member to pick up for you when you are ready to be discharged. When you go home, it is important to take your medications as prescribed. If you have any issues or your pain is not controlled, you should call the surgeon's office. As stated previously, discharge planning starts prior to surgery. The goal is for our patients to go home directly from the hospital. Research shows that the best way to recover is in your own home. However, this is not always possible and each patient is assessed to ensure that home is the safest option. Your knee will have an Aquacil dressing, which will be removed approximately seven days after surgery. If you have staples, you will be given instructions on when they will be removed. Please use good hand hygiene at all times in order to prevent infection. You should call your surgeon if your wound is draining, have a fever, or if you have redness in the area. After surgery, you may experience swelling in your surgical leg. It will be important for you to elevate your leg to minimize swelling as swelling can cause increased pain and decrease your range of motion. At home, you can lie on your bed with your leg resting on a laundry basket. Ideally, your knee should be straight, as in the top picture, but if you cannot tolerate this, try laying with your knee slightly bent, as in the bottom picture. Do not try to do this on the floor because you will have much difficulty trying to get back up. We re recommend that you elevate your leg at least twice per day for 20 to 30 minutes each time to keep the swelling under control. You may also continue to wear your TED stockings at home. However, wearing them is not mandatory. Most of our patients receive or attend physical therapy after discharge. There may be times that the surgeon does not start therapy immediately. If you do not have a physical therapy appointment already scheduled, the navigator will discuss your options for continued physical therapy prior to discharge. We recommend that you use Doylestown Hospital Home Health Services and Doylestown Hospital Outpatient Therapy. Our staff has extensive training on your surgeon's protocol and work closely with the surgeons to ensure that you are on the path to a speedy recovery. At times, the plan that you had in place may change depending on how you are doing. The orthopedic navigator will assist you with discharge planning and any needs you may have when you leave the hospital. If you are unable to go home directly, the navigator will discuss the options with you. Everyone has different insurance plans, which can impact where you go. Typically, you will have a follow-up appointment with your surgeon four to six weeks after surgery, although this time frame sometimes differs depending on your surgeon. If you do not have a follow-up appointment already scheduled, please call your surgeon's office to schedule it. At this visit, you will know if you are able to drive and have your staples removed. Your surgeon will inform you if and when you need to follow up again. 
a few days after discharge, you will receive an email from the address below, Doylestown Hospital Orthopedic Institute at ortexsystems.com. Please complete the survey as we value your input and use responses to maintain and improve our services. If you have any issues, please do not hesitate to let us know. Also, you will be sent an email to complete a questionnaire about how you are functioning prior to your surgery and at periodic times during your recovery. Please complete them as they are helpful in tracking and monitoring your progress. We usually receive some frequently asked questions, so I thought that I may address some of those here. It may be up to four hours from the time you arrive at the hospital to the time you get to your room on the orthopedic floor. Your family is welcome to wait in the family waiting area and they will be provided with updates about how you are doing. Your surgeon will come talk to them after your surgery is complete. For same day surgery patients, your coach will be present during the therapy session and for discharge instructions. Below is a list of things to bring to the hospital. Comfortable loose fitting clothes, supportive shoes with non-slip soles, Shoes without ties are easier. Also, if you would like to get elastic ties on your shoes, that is sometimes helpful for patients. Bring an updated list of all your medications and over-the-counter medications, a cell phone charger, and any personal items such as cosmetics and toiletries. Please do not bring valuables to the hospital. The following exercises are typical exercises that you will do after your surgery. Your therapist will provide a home exercise program specifically for you. The following video demonstrates exercises for after a total knee arthroplasty surgery. The first exercise is called an ankle pump. With your operated leg relaxed, gently flex and extend your ankle. Move through the full range of motion. You can also perform these exercises sitting in the chair. Repeat 10 times and do two sets per session. Repeat these throughout the day. The next exercise is called a quad set. Bend up your non-operated leg. Then pull your toes towards your operated knee, tensing the muscles in the front of your thigh, and push the back of the knee down towards the surface. Keep your leg and buttock flat on the surface. Hold for five seconds. Repeat these 10 times per set and do two sets per session, performing these two times per day. The next exercise is called a heel slide. Bend up your non-operated leg. Slide the heel of your operated leg towards your buttocks until a gentle stretch is felt. Hold that for five seconds. Relax. Repeat 10 times and do two sets per session. Do this one twice a day. The next exercise is a straight leg raise. Bend up your non-operated leg. Tighten the muscles on the front of your operated thigh. Lock your knee straight and then lift your leg six inches from the surface, keeping the knee locked. Repeat 10 times. Do two sets per session and do two sessions per day. The next exercises are seated. With a towel beneath your operated foot, slide your operated foot back until a stretch is felt. Hold this for five seconds. You may then gently push your operated leg further back with your other leg until a stretch is felt. Repeat 10 times, do two sets, and do two sessions per day. The final exercise is knee extension. While seated, Straighten your operated knee fully, keeping your thigh down, then lower slowly. Repeat this 10 times, do two sets per session, 
and do two sessions per day. On behalf of everyone here at the Orthopedic Institute at Dawestown Hospital, we would like to thank you for not only choosing us to care for you, but also thank you for viewing this presentation. Please click the button at the bottom of this page to verify that you have received this education. Also, if you have any questions, please reach out to the Orthopedic Navigator. We will see you soon and good luck with your upcoming surgery.